So you've survived the fourth rivalry after all. Color me impressed. I guess the little prince just couldn't measure up. Given that he had the fortress's power, he should have had at least a 60% chance of winning. Oh well. And knowing Shirley, she would have gone all out when it came to battle. Well, moving on. How do you care for our artistic embellishments? We figured this place could use some touching up. Is this all just a game to you? You two really are the worst. I see McBurn's not with you. Even so, I can sense him. He's waiting for us somewhere in this fortress. My, how perceptive! Those senses of yours are impressively sharp. Perhaps it's something you picked up from being the sacrifice. It seems like McBurn has his own things he wants to take care of. But I've gotta say, he's been real fired up since you're running at Orcus Tower. We promise not to play too rough. If you're curious, why don't you go check up on him yourselves after we're done here? Well, assuming you managed to make it past the Jade Rook too, of course. Your words mean nothing. You don't even have any intention of taking this battle seriously. It sounds like they're only going to do the bare minimum to fuel the rivalry. That's right. The more I understand how the rivalries work, the more intrigued I am. They're very well designed. They're actually the perfect reference for my Ars Magna research. So please, don't hold back. I'll need every little bit of data I can get from you. You really are the worst. You may be an Anguish, just like the Steel Maiden was, but you're nothing like her. Oh my. I'm terribly sorry if I offended you. I considered dropping in to bid her farewell, but since we weren't especially close, I decided it wasn't my place. To be honest, though, I'm a little surprised McBurn didn't stop by. Who knows? Maybe he already said his goodbyes. I'm sure our other members outside of Erebonia would have liked to pay their respects, too. Oh well. That's just how things go sometimes. I've got a question for you two. It might be a little late to be asking, but what happened to taking back your Phantasmal Blaze plan? Ooh. Hmm? And why would you possibly be interested in that little SSS fangirl? It's because the SSS got wrapped up in it that I want to know! And now that we're on the topic, there are a bunch of things I just don't get about you. You go around pressing people's buttons and making evil grins, but I don't get the feeling you're as much of a jerk as you let on. And on top of that, people say you've looked exactly the same for the past decade. What even are you? Oh? Could he be a homunculus like me and Milliam? Nah. His facial expressions, the malice behind his grin, it all seems way too human. I don't get the feeling he's an immortal either. And you, Mariabelle. Let's forget the fact that you're a scummy traitor for a moment. Why the heck did someone as self-absorbed as you swear allegiance to the Grandmaster? I wondered that about Vita, too. And even the Steel Maiden! She was a proud knight. Why would she serve such a group? <laughs> Aren't the Enforcers free to do whatever, too? If they want to leave the group, Ouroboros doesn't try to stop them at all! What kind of evil organization works like that? The Guild's been wondering that for a while now, too. The Steel Maiden went off and did her own thing, and Sharon's quit completely. Not just them, either. Joshua, Ren, Blue Blanc, the late Blade Lord, and one other I've heard about. If you add Vita, too, then that's a lot of your group that's gone AWOL. Yet here you are, acting like it's no big deal. This shit don't add up. Your whole group just doesn't act like a team at all. It's like... How do I put it? 
Ouroboros is an organization comprised of people who work to further the Grand Master's goals. But at the same time, your members are also part of some bigger experiment. Huh? That's it! Wait, damn it, Egret! Why you gotta steal my thunder like that? <laughs> wow! Those are some serious leaps of logic right there. But maybe this was bound to happen at some point. That's right. The Burl and Crossbell's fate being swallowed by the Empire, the SSS's findings, the Gospel Plan... Anyone who cared to put together all these pieces should have been able to realize what was truly going on. <laughs> but it certainly is surprising that it was you of all people who figured it out. Was it Mr. Ash and Chevalier's lessons that helped you hone that intuition? No. To be honest, I'm just as surprised. It actually makes perfect sense. She has the perspective of both Crossbell and the Empire. And the will to never give up. It's thanks to both Instructor Reen's ability to bring out the best in people, and Yuna's own determination that she's come so far. If Reen is the core of Class 7, then maybe Yuna is the bridge that links Class 7 to the world. W whoa there! I think you're giving me way too much credit. I'm just trying to get as much info out of them as I can. Knowing them, they're just gonna get in our way, say something vague, and then vanish. You're standing against us right now because you feel like it. But I'm fighting back for the sake of those who believe in the future! I have no idea what Ouroboros is planning after the Great Twilight's over. But whatever it is, we'll put a stop to it. Just like we're going to stop you now! Wow, not bad. Yuna... You tell him, girl. Well said. I'm proud of you, Yuna. <laughs> My, that was absolutely splendid! Yuna Crawford. I must admit, I didn't expect such a fine diamond in the rough from the city I left behind. Of course, it was Thor's Class 7 that cut and polished her. And thanks for that excellent little speech of yours. I think I'll actually go all out for once. Damn it, of course they've got backup. Brace yourselves, everyone. We're gonna have to give this everything we've got. Let's begin, shall we? We were only planning to have a little fun with you. But seeing as you won't stop going on about togetherness and bonds, maybe it'd be fun to see what happens if I thin your ranks a little. <laughs> How about this? If you show me a good time, I'll throw in a little bonus. I'll share a juicy tidbit about the society, if you win. Only information the Grandmaster has permitted me to share, of course. I want to hear you fight, and struggle, and cry out in pain! Are all of you Ouroboros people actually insane? You want a fight? I'll give you a fight! Class 7, prepare for battle. Don't be fooled by their tricks. Fight them with everything you have, with the power of all our friends and allies! Right! right. How'd you like that? <sighs> Dear me, how unexpected. Oh, I even used the skills I copied from the Iron Bloods, but it didn't make a difference. I won't let you. I'm coming too. My, you're not as easy to shake off as those simpletons from the SSS, are you? Come on now, do you seriously think you can capture us? No, I doubt we'd be able to. And honestly, I wish I could just tell you to get out of our sight. Further, attacking wounded opponents would bring no honor. But you said you'd give us more info. 
so it's time to pay up. What the hell happened with the Phantasmal Blaze plan? Let's start with that! Oh, fine. The truth is, the plan is still in effect. In fact, it's nearly at its end. Once the rivalry of the Seven has been completed, our objective will be met. <gasps> How come Vita wasn't even aware that your goal had changed? Well, that's because she just wanted to lift the curse through those pseudo-rivalries she was setting up. We, on the other hand, are here to witness the reformation of the Great One. Though to be honest, we don't actually care whether or not all its pieces stick together properly. Wh what do you mean? In other words, your goal isn't to claim the two Septarians. But rather, you intend to return the power divided among the Divine Knights back to one. And it doesn't matter to you if it's properly reformed or not? That's right. We don't care if they disappear either, the same way the Septarian of Mirage did. Observing the path each of the seven Septarians take when dropped into mankind's hands in this possible world. That is our goal. The driving force behind the Grandmaster's plan. <sighs> possible world? What the hell does that even mean? those who are still bound by the shackles of this world wouldn't be able to comprehend our mission. Not everyone can be on the same level as Professor Epstein, after all. For now, don't worry your pretty little heads about it. Just focus on the rivalries ahead. Rufus is waiting for you on the top floor, by the by. Oh, and he's got Alberic with him. You might want to be careful with that one. The Chief of the Gnomes is there, too? Whoa. An Ion! So they've been hiding them here in the fortress. In all honesty, you lot aren't half bad. You exceeded our expectations, at the very least. McBurn might finally be able to accomplish his long-held plans if he's up against you guys. I'm sure he'd appreciate it if you went and paid him a visit. Regardless of how this tale ends, Ouroboros will carry on with the Grandmaster's plan. We will soon move on to the third stage of the Orpheus final plan. Who knows? I may just be lucky enough to encounter some of you again, someplace or other. Oh, and by the way, Yuna, dear, would you mind passing a message from me to Ellie and your other friends at the SSS? Please tell them. We'll meet again someday. Oh, and that I'll be rooting for Crossbell's independence.